Hello everyone. In this video I will be discussing several requirements analysis strategies. These are ways that you can discover the true underlying requirements. The learning objective for this video is as follows. After watching, students should be able to describe several analysis strategies that can help the analyst to discover requirements. The analysis strategy that you choose will shape the requirements gathering technique that you are using. For example, it will help you to decide what questions you want to ask in interviews and questionnaires, or what topics you want to focus on in JAD sessions, or what documents you want to request to analyze, or what jobs you want to observe in practice. During the course of this video, I'm going to refer to the following example. Consider that a bank has a process for approving mortgage loans for customers. First, the customer meets with a loan officer. Then, the customer submits information on a paper form. Then, the bank runs a credit check on the customer. And finally, the bank completes a follow-up interview with the customer. This is the current situation, or the as-is system. I'll now discuss several analysis strategies that the analyst could take in analyzing both the current situation and determining what the requirements for a good new system might be. The first strategy is problem analysis. In this strategy, the analyst asks users to identify problems and solutions. The improvements tend to be small and incremental. For example, the analyst could interview a manager at the bank and ask what are the problems in the current business process. A similar strategy is root cause analysis. In root cause analysis, the analyst challenges assumptions about why problems exist, and they try to trace the symptoms to their root causes to discover the real problem. For example, consider that during the interview, the manager tells the analyst that one problem is customer complaints being high. The analyst can dig deeper to find the root cause of the problem. It may be that the process is longer than customers are expecting it to take, or it could be various other reasons. The next strategy is duration analysis. In duration analysis, the analyst finds out how long the whole process normally takes, and then how long each individual step takes. The analyst then asks which activities can be shortened. In our example, the analyst would find out how long it takes for customers to meet with a loan officer, how long it takes them to submit the paper form, how long it takes for a credit check to be run, and so forth. And then the analyst, together with the help of the organization, tries to find ways to improve the process by shortening one or more of these activities. In activity-based costing, the analyst also breaks up the process into individual steps and asks how much does each step cost the organization. Can any of the steps be more cost-efficient? For example, would it be more cost-efficient to have customers submitting their forms online rather than meeting with loan officers? In informal benchmarking, the analyst compares the organization's process to other similar organizations who are completing similar processes. For example, the analyst could investigate how other banks do the mortgage process, and as a result, ask what improvements can be made. Another strategy is outcome analysis. In this strategy, the analyst considers desirable outcomes from the customer's perspective. For example, the bank might say that a favorable outcome would be approval of the loan. However, customers might also consider how fast the loan is approved in determining whether they had a good outcome with the bank. In other words, the analyst helps the organization to see alternative outcomes that might be important to the customer that they might not have previously considered. In technology analysis, the analyst and the employees both list important and interesting technologies. Then the group goes through each list and identifies how each might be applied to the business and how the business might benefit. For example, the analyst or the employees might consider that more and more people are using mobile apps, so they might consider automating some portion of the mortgage process to a mobile app. For example, allowing a customer to check on their app whether their loan has been approved. One final requirements analysis strategy is activity elimination. In activity elimination, the analyst identifies what would happen if each organizational activity were eliminated. He or she must insist that all activities are potentially eliminated, even if it seems preposterous. In our example, the analyst would ask first, what would happen if the customer didn't meet with a loan officer? What would happen if the customer's credit wasn't checked? And so forth. 
In this way, the analyst works with the organization to find improvements at each and every step of the process, and could potentially eliminate whole steps, or at least automate them through a digital system. Here is a summary of the strategies that I've discussed in this short video. Problem analysis and root cause analysis are best for finding small improvements over the current situation. Duration analysis, activity-based costing, and informal benchmarking are great for creating moderate improvements in effectiveness or efficiencies. If the organization is looking to redesign or overhaul the whole process or system, it might be best to consider outcome analysis, technology analysis, or activity elimination as a strategy. Again, the strategy you choose will shape the techniques you use to gather requirements and refine them for your requirements definition document.